Hi, I'm Patricia Allingham Carlson, and this is my video of how I painted Regal, Victoria Crowned Pigeon. I had seen a picture of this beautiful bird on a Facebook nature lovers page. I absolutely fell in love with it and its enchanting head crest. So I decided to paint it. I hope that you'll enjoy my video and give it a thumbs up. Now let's paint. I gathered up my materials. I had acrylic inks, water sprayer, and a substance called granulation medium, which I decided to try with my acrylic inks. Before I start, I waxed off the edges of my paper surface tape so that extra paint and water wouldn't run off. I'm playing here with the beautiful, brilliant acrylic inks diluted by a lot of water. I'm going with a very rudimentary idea of a bird in silhouette. And I'm using different shades of blue, turquoise, a little purple, and some green. Spreading the paint around and letting it run and form its own paths and channels. The darker color is some more purple. I figure if this doesn't work out as a, a bird silhouette, I can make it into something else. And you could see how wet it is from how the paint is running. After I've put down the bright colors, I come in with the white acrylic ink and splatter that around. This really is playing. And playing with art materials is a lot of fun. I put a little bit of the granulation medium in there, covered it with plastic wrap and a heavy book, and waited till the next day. And now I'm sketching in with a white pastel stick. I'm looking at a photographic reference on my iPad. And I figured I would start on the background working very wet on wet around the bird and place the bird into a natural setting. These are random vegetation forms and I'm using different shades of hooker's green, deep, sap green, yellow, and hooker's green light as well. A little Antwerp blue and a little pale washed out vermilion. Now since all this darkness is in this section of the background and I didn't want it all to be dark and appear to be bird, I did use some white gouache mixed in with my colors to cover over the dark paint where I didn't want it. And that was where the acrylic ink ran. But the white gouache mixed in with watercolors covers it up quite nicely. I'm using the same white gouache to fill in where the feather markings are going to be, as well as some of the planes of the face and where the bird has a lighter color than what I achieved with my acrylic ink and all of its running. And you could see how I could sketch right on top of those dark colors with the gouache mixed in. I find this is the only way to work is by using gouache and white acrylic inks. When you're using plastic wrap and acrylic ink, 
in a random manner like this. You have to be ready to cover up where you don't want what happened, as well as add on to what did happen. I continue adding, adding leaf forms to this wet background and trying to keep them very blurry. Where I've kept the background dark, I'm now building up some lights around the edges of the bird. And again, I'm using that white gouache to mix in with my watercolor to make it more opaque. I'm defining some feather markings. I've decided that I don't want this bird to be ultra realistic because he won't be anyway, but I do want him to show some feathers and some marks of his particular breed, including that glorious crest. And now I'm filling in where the eye is. There's some other dark markings on the face and around the bill that I'm also defining here. Now I'm working around the back of the bird's neck so it will stand out from that background. I'm adding more lights. I'm also defining some of the structure of how the bird's body goes together there. Adding a bit of light to the other side as well. And I've mixed the blue, blue cobalt with some white gouache to make it stand out. And I'm starting to like the background more now. Developing a little bit of the crest. I'm pulling in the basic feather lines and how they go out into the crest. And by the way, I did something wrong with the granulation fluid because I didn't see any places where it seemed to turn up or show. So maybe my paint wasn't thick enough. Maybe it was too thinned out by water. I've now gotten out an ink pen and I'm using white acrylic ink to outline some of the feathers up in the crest. Some of them have a dark quill and some of them have a white quill. So I used both. The crest also was somewhat see-through because it wasn't a solid thing. So I have to figure out how to paint some background showing through some of all these feathers in the headdress. It was one of the main features of this gorgeous bird. And I've got to make it look good. In the meantime, I'm continuing to develop all around the painting. And I have thinned out the white gouache with a lot of water, so it's easier to spread for me. But that means I have to put more layers on top of each other. Now I'm developing the background that goes around the headdress or 
crest. In this lower section, it is supposed to be dark by my eyes so that the very light crest feathers will stand out. As I move upward, I'm planning to get brighter and lighter. So I'm trying to paint into the head crest at this point between the little individual feather quills and painting around the negative space. This was complicated and a little bit confusing at some times. I did use some masking fluid to try to help plan that out, but that didn't work very well for me. And here come some brights showing through up at the top that are continuing in from the background color. And this begins to define the shape of the crest at the very top. There's a kind of reverse thinking with watercolor where you want things to be light and to show up against a dark, you have to paint around the light with the dark. Although using ink and gouache, you can paint back on top. When using pure watercolor, you really can't. but I can feel it taking form and shape. And even though it's an awful lot of work, it's getting pretty visually exciting to work on for me. I continue adding darker colors in between all the little feathers all throughout the head crest. I was just showing you how much white paint I have on my hands because I'm going alternating between dark paint and white paint. And here I'm erasing my original outlines I had done with the white uh, pastel chalk. Each of these little feathers was topped by a tuft of feathers and they were white. And they gave the bird's head such a beautiful, almost magical appearance. So I'm using my acrylic ink so they will be as light as I can possibly get them. And I'm detailing the feathers on top of those darks that I brought into the background. I make sure that I overlap some feathers and make some of them going in slightly different directions so it doesn't all look regular. but more natural that way. Developing this, all the feathers of the head crest took more time than anything else. But that very feature was what made the bird so splendid. When I cover over sections of my painting, it shows me where things are looking right or wrong. 
And that's a good tool that I frequently use. Here I'm correcting the background, where there was a blade of, of leaf or grasses or something that didn't look wrong, right. I've increased the darkness to the left side of the bird's head, and so I'm bringing some more darks into the crest there to show through from the background. And then I'm adding more darks all over the rest of the head as well. And you can see how those dark colors make the light colors really stand out. It seemed to be adding a lot of drama to this painting of a bird. Adding a few more quills with white tufts on top. Now I'm at the point in my painting where I'm doing a lot of tweaking. Adding some little patches of light showing through. Adding some feathers here and there and defining some. Refining the head. And where the crest starts and the skull ends, I'm adding some shading. A few more dark showing through up in the head crest. This very intricate head crest with all these feathers took a lot of time, but I could see that it's paying off and it's starting to look good. I do another evaluation to see if one side needs more work than another. And then I adjust back into my white ink to try to pop some of those little tufts at the top of the feathers and make them an even brighter white. And now I'm coming on with a darker color and adding a few more quills in a darker line. Some more dark quills coming in. And I'm signing my name and it's done. I hope you enjoyed my video, Regal Victoria Crowned Print Pigeon. I hope it taught you something that you could use in your own painting. 
And I hope you'll give it a thumbs up and subscribe. There's some links below that you can click on to see some other things I have featured, such as my art page on Facebook, my blog about art and life, some of the products I use to create my art, and some of my own products on a page where things can be purchased. I hope that you'll comment and I'll try to answer as many as I possibly can. And I thank you for watching. And I'll see you next video.